Hello, and welcome back to Banner Saga 2. Let's speak with Eowyn. Let's see what he has to say. We watched for a moment as A went. Juno's apprentice and the men there found nearly dead at Richhorn. Lucy's staff in a complex pattern repairing, repairing some armor. Not a bad festival trick, right? I've seen worse. And I've seen better. Like Kyrus back in Bullsguard with stopping Bellower. For all the good it did. Eowyn watches you, studying your face before speaking. I know the pain in your eyes. Remember when we left Circle? I just knew if we could wait one more day, you know to arrive. And you were wrong. Like you are now. You saved thousands, hundreds of lives, each one grateful for your leadership. And all it cost me was my daughter. <laughs> I'd give anything to have her back. Ewin's face falls. You don't know how dangerous that thinking can be. What do you mean? He seems to shake himself from some distant memory. Nothing, uh, just... Believe me. You're protecting these people, seeing them to safety? is the only hope for the future. Ewin picks up the repaired armor, hitting it with his staff to test it. I'm glad we could talk, but I need to check on the fighter who was wearing this. I know I'm giving him a girlish kind of voice, but I just can't help myself. It suits him. Now we need to... Now we need to leave, we don't have enough food. To justify resting for too long. You look at all the food freshly placed in the supply... supply cards. What's all this about, you Oddly? What's this? What's all this about, you Oddly? The classmen are, are trying to help as much as possible now, she says. Whenever they can, don't forage for nuts and berries or fish and hunt. She hands you a piece of fruit. They might not know how to fight, but they can keep us alive by keeping us fed. Nice, another day's worth of supplies. A crowd begins to cheer from one of the long ships as a man struggles with his fishing net. As his catch nears the surface, some voice concerns. You're close enough to make out a large shape and what looks like for her in the net. Fire an arrow. The arrow finds its mark just before the net breaks the water. Those around you applaud your quick thinking. Whatever's in that net won't have much of fight left in it, says the man beside you. Burkups, shouts the man of the net. Long dead. What does it mean? Superstitions blow across the ships like a gale. Talk of plagues and famine make eyes go wide. Notice Bolverk at the bow of his ship, staring at the cup and brooding more than usual. A desperate looking lot of adults and a girl stand on a shoreline waving you down. Probably look similar going anywhere with either. They look hungry, but can they be trusted? Mm, those some some so the balls. The basics the world says food, safety, trade roads are empty. One of two dozen humans half look like they've seen battle. Mm, come aboard. No. Oh. Mm, yes, no. Mm, come aboard, you have food and safety. Everyone carefully flies files onto a couple of uh, less burdened ships and starts eating. Clip, the world says, which you take as his name and his appreci appreciation. I know I shouldn't be helping everyone so much. I just can't help myself and it's gonna bite me in the back. Soon. I think. Shouts from one of the rear longships grab everyone's attention. The quick construction is proving faulty and the ship is taking on water fast. With dredge on the bank and all the ships almost at capacity, you consider your options. Hmm. Ask shipwrights for advice? We'll need her out of the water, says one. Nonsense! Just plug it out with some cloth and tar for now, says another. As they argue, husband begin jumping from the sea and dust grabbing for ropes and extended oars. Most make you aboard other ships, but not all. 
Jones. Smoke from a village catches everyone's attention and the long ships begin to slow. I doubt this scraps of loot will fall in can hold many more. Ever since you feel the governor's gaze on you and he slowly shakes his head. You want me to turn my back on them? It's not that, Ivo says, it's just that if you try to fall too much, you see all off, then not try at all. Fine. But they might resupply us. No, no. The other ships follow your lead while nearly everyone averts their eyes from the smoking village. Ruga looks impressed. And it didn't hurt our morale. Okay. That was a lot. A large crop of hazelnut trees looked like a good place for clansmen to stretch their legs and gather supplies. Once all on land, the children love walk kicking around little wrapped balls of rags. You notice a well on the edge of the clearing silently staring into the woods. He's watching a lone ridge grand stalk a squirrel. Maybe a hundred of them in these woods, the vowel whispers in so loud enough to scare the squirrel and alert the grunt. It looks at you and the vowel before slowly backing up. Watch the dredge, track it if possible. The grunt runs away, you suddenly follow but stop when you discover a clearing with a few small animal bones lying about, meager meals for one. Near the bones stand a tiny statue of a dragon and terror courses down your spine, you want to get away from it. Yeah, let's take it. Each step toward the statue adds to your doubt until your hand wraps around it. You realize you've been holding your breath and sigh with relief. Back on the ship, the classmen discuss your whole experience among all the nuts they collected. Smiles appear on most faces. Carved rock on a vacant island. Asilai's godstone almost looks lonely. And so we will keep it company. She's even more beautiful than the songs say. Men and Varl admiring the godstone when you notice some are missing. It's Bolvern and his ravens, Oil says. They looked rather upset by my music and all the singing, he shrugs. If they'd rather hang around that large car instead of joining us, I won't take it personally. But come closer, let me introduce you to Asalei, the god of streaming waters. She is the curves of every river, a guide for those of us traveling unfamiliar land, the god runs a finger with small etchings in the stone. Inscriptions from all those who were lost but found a way back home by help. Let's listen to the tale. Some say her stone shows the struggle of waving the familiar to see what's over at the next hill. Lo looks at the rope tied on parts of her and smiles. Before the gods died, her stone supposedly stood tall and moved a few steps each year, so people are always trying to make sure she stays put. Lo looks at you, Granny. Have you ever s have you the strength to hold her or a gift with? which to entice her. Let's pull on one of the stronger ropes. You wrap your hands around one of the larger ropes and begin to pull. It feels as pulled as a reflected and as Lay's costume doesn't budge. Suddenly you are joined by Hakon and Ivor who lend their great strength. Others quickly join until the rope snaps and everyone spoils with a laughing heap. You return to where the craftsmen have set up camp and see someone, a woman in torn robes, slip from your tent. She blends in with the other family and after making sure nothing is amiss in your tent, you let go. Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, we can train them. Well, come on in, let's have a look at you, Sven, the trainer says. The trainer looks past at you at some boys and girls eager to learn. 
Ditching fighting to the youngs. They won't go back to hunting and foraging for food, you know. If you want to go through with this. Sven blows out all his air through flapping lips. Then let's get it done. How many you want fighting for you? A mm, uh, hundred, I think, would be enough. Yeah, not too much. You got enough food and water to last us a day and a half? Heaven <laughs> asked. That's what it'll take for me to break them from running at the first sign of trouble. Make it happen. Consider it done! Sven whistles through his missing thief. thief. The two of our look deep in conversation, but Ivor catches your eye and waves you over. So they will arm themselves and are running from something, but what? Hakon's becoming a dredge schooler, trying to understand the motivations of our enemy. It's just strange that we've never seen a woman fight under Risley. Good thing, though, we might have lost the Great Wars. Think about what to say. Juno says there's the darkness coming. But what, what Valkas has say and Mina are always the same. They speak in riddles and prophecy. Still, it might explain why the dredge are everywhere, like someone kicked an anthill. Maybe whatever's coming hit them first. Or maybe it's just a new tactic for a new war. If they've learned to crack the ground and cook a giant serpent, then we're all dead and just don't know it yet. Has anyone ever talked to dredge? Both are look at each other. There are rumors that some have tried and been killed in the process. A lot of nonsense. Skull tales about the sound of a dredge's voice making his skin fall off. So there's been no communication with the enemy? Is that normal? We are too busy killing to worry about the first fireside chat. Besides, oh, they only ever make warbling sounds. I would guess if anyone has stuck to them, it'd be the Valka, but good luck getting them to give you a straight answer. What happened back, back then? A great deal of killing on both sides. Imagine waking up to dredge attacks every night. Back then, the sun actually said, you wake up to a sound and see nothing but glowing red eyes around you. Ingvar probably told you we never got close to pushing them back to the depths they call home. Actually, I, I've never said much about the past. Oh, Ivar says nothing, just holds Hagen stare. Well, he's probably got more stories than you could hear in your short lifetime. Okay, so I'll leave you too. You should know the classmen have been talking about us killing women and children, dredge or not. It's not sitting well with everyone, which is probably the way it should be. I say if it's us or them, we make sure we're still standing. I'm bothered more by, Troy, by your decision to destroy Einarhof's bridge. Let it go, Hakon. It was the best decision at the time. To collapse a bridge that cost thousands of worlds lives to build. If it weren't for your damn horns, Ingvar, I'd swear you were an out overgrown human. The two giants begin trading insults and you step away, letting them vent. I'm trying to reach for my tea. Okay, I'm ready. We can we, I can, we can actually rest. <laughs> mm. Let's see, because we can promote somebody. Yay! The old leaf. Mm, yep. Um, what do we have here? Robust. Like, like critical. Oh, I really want to give critical chance. Yep. Slug and burn the cartridge. Throws the 5 tile area of slag onto the ground, which explodes immediately. Your tiles take the damage sink below. Mm, adjacent units take 2 strength damage. It also will be suddenly placed burning coals on unoccupied tiles if targeted. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. The character uses her longbow to shoot further than other, less experienced archer, and she always hits her mark. Could of prey make it possible for her to strike and units before they are able to get in attack range and all safety punch? You die, I like that. Give me that. And another one here. And resist, dragon. It's per turn. Dodge. Bonus hit chance. Bonus hit? Hmm. Sure. 
I'm curious. And you have six. Oh, Nova, Grom statue, Cooper kill, plus one as the air, plus three break. That break is really something, and I wouldn't like. I mean, I would like to give it up. Much. Give him more of us. I want him to be the tank. Time on the cramped long ship is proving too much for the children. They're climbing ropes, interrupting rowers, and constantly leaning over the sides to touch the water. Some vowel and craftsmen look annoyed. Keep your case by your side. May fam move families to specific longships. Yeah. You order the longships alongside each other before revealing your plan. Some are shocked and reluctantly follow, while others agree with your decision. The rearrangement takes more time than you expected, but the vessels are soon moving again with children only climbing over those with children of their own. A cool breeze across the water works its way into your cloak. You shift to block the wind and feel something press into your hip. You feel around and find an item in your pack, but don't remember updating it. The sheer cliffs and boulder strewn waters of the southern bank they dictate the longship's course. The droning sound of the dredge accent their quicker pace as they follow your ships along the northern bank. Dust and mist make it hard to see ahead. A hissing, rumbling noise grows around. around. Waterfall! shouts the sharp eyed lead from the bow, bow of her longship. Oars instantly reverse and you nearly lose your balance. The roar of the approaching waterfall clouds your thoughts. While all the classmen you picked up keep the ships from being nimble, it's only allows them to react. It's a struggle, but no long ships are swept over the waterfall. The remaining ships rower rowers pull back pull hard, heading for the dredge line the northern bank. In their haste, the vessels smash against sharp split rocks as they push towards the shore. Some fighters are thrown from the boats, sinking in the in mud under the weight of their armor. The longships are too spread out to command a unified landing. Amid the chaos, you look at those nearby. Gris, a stout warrior, and a few others like him look ready to rush to the dread. Bulwark and his company are close to you, holding their sealed card. Sealed card of the ships until your option. Mm. Oh no! Without any question, your authority, the stout wall ground and arrange, and I don't know what I pressed. Five other will join him and push forward into the dredge also while you're ready to attack. No, I do not want... No! <laughs> I definitely want that. Odd leaf. Uh, a wind, sure. Taken. Nice. trail. Plus two will and close strike. Maybe we could, we could use that instead of this. Oh, who else? Mogur, I guess. They are already full <laughs> motion. Uh, we don't use Trimmer. So we will take his stuff. Oh no, we lost Barl. Chris, why did he advance so far? Don't let his death be in vain. Fight! No, I don't want him to die. 
Where you want to put that? It's a misclick. You I want here. Old leaf. I want rose. Ready. Oh, that's gonna be bad. For him. But he's not gonna be first. Old leaf will hurt him. Yeah, but he's gonna be hurt, hurt first. That's unfortunate. Only full kill him, that's for sure. But your flank, something schools from the from far sides. What the So Oddly won't kill him. But she will hurt him. Coker. Okay. okay. You should stand here, and you should arc lightning on him with all the power you get. As much as possible. More of those damn skulkers. Oh no no no, we have to kill him. That's you. Kill that one, it might make the others one. Why is he always standing here? Can you hit him? Okay, he will hit the rope. Oh my god. Oh ho ho, that was a bad idea. That was a very bad idea. We'll try to kill him. That, that is if he doesn't kill the Okay, it is obvious turn to try and get rid of him. <laughs> ah, he's down. I don't know why. They just ate him. I really hope you meant this one. That was strange. I had to pick up a call from the toaster. Mm -hmm. Hakon works his way through fronting clansmen on his way, way on his way to you. You made some tough calls on that river. If those ships had been loaded down with more people, no telling how many would have lost. Thanks. Too bad the landing was so rough. Hakon squints into the distance. Their next attack is coming, and this time will come in force. What do they want? They seem keen on our supplies, but if that can be it, can it? That wasn't the reason for attacking as a Polish guard. 
Juno and Eivind approach. They may be a way for us of this situation. A gamble to be sure, but we believe it's our only chance. Gods, it but when the Balka option is the only option. Worse than that, I I can't promise everyone will make it. Juno gives Eivind a look. Just tell me a plan. Eivind sighs. With Juno's help, I think I can get us across the chasm, but it won't be easy for me or the caravan. I need to help Eivind to calm these people so they are ready to march when he is ready. We need to keep this area clear of threat at all costs. If they... The sound of a war horn cuts off and everyone turns to look for threat assault, but yes. Look, Haken, you know what to do. It looks like the force you train is roughly the size of the enemies. This could go either way, but the victory here will protect most of your clansmen. Juno and Eowyn move to the cliff's edge. Hakon, surveying the battlefield, says, Some supply bar barrels could make a few barricades for defense, otherwise it will be a straightforward assault. Sure, we will find more. Men and world begin moving barrels full food and gear ahead of the fighters, but they look your way for confirmation. You realize the supplies will be ruined in fight. Do it. The bars are barely rolled, <laughs> barely rolled into the place before the fighting begins. Yeah, I know he's injured. I don't think we'll take him. Wait, who's up? Why is Ivor out? I want him in. Oh. Box. Give me meat. Give me cream. Instead of him, we can't really wait. What's with this? <gasps> nice. Okay, so we 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 looks green. That's not so bad then. I didn't realize they have. Wait, he doesn't have more. This means he has promotion. He doesn't have anything else. You don't. You don't. Wait. Um. Doesn't have anything. Um, wait, we have Ivor. Who's out? I don't know. I can't tell who is out. Oh, the break is so good on you. Plus three strength. This gives plus one strength. Okay, given this. Because I feel bad if, I, if we don't use it. Uh, this gives you even more. <laughs> we don't have anything from Krumr. No, we can give him this. Just so he has something. Wait, wait, wait. Give me this. Give me. Okay. Maybe we want to promote him? Sure! Yeah, we can promote him. That's why I like Varls. They have so much health and armor. They are big, but, you know. <clears throat> Hold them off. This will take time. We'll try. Yeah, and they far may not be the best choice for this fight. All things considered, they may come home. Actually, yep. Wait, I will swap you. You here, you here. We are ready. We should be ready. Nice. to them first. Oh, they are over here as well. So this, this might have been a bad choice after all. You hit your... 
really. I do. You must keep the dredge away. I'm trying. Also trade a wind group doing it. There's no need to worry if they have low strength. Maybe this one. Almost, but we still need more time. His armor that is. That should work. If we can clear away the thread, we can proceed. Okay. Where my plan ends <laughs> badly. They can't move through. Oh, look, maybe that's not so bad. Oh, okay. okay, that's fine. His wars. But we are ours. They do too. That uh, should be fine. Yeah, 
she needs to move away from this one. Leave the old man alone. Now we crit. <laughs> now we crit. Juno walks onto the floating land crab, cradling a kid goat in one arm. He looks strained, but beckons to the families to follow. You shout for everyone to start moving, but the fighters and craftsmen alike remain motionless. Large chunks of air bobbling in mid-air like ships at sea has been unsettled. Finally, Ivor takes the reins of a yacht loaded with a supply card and walks out onto the first floating stone. It supports the load without issue. We go. This way, or the dredge kill us all. To his voice, our words are punctuated by slinging a stone, treading into the ground only fit way. Men pick up their children and start running. The caravan animals squawk and bleed in the frenzy. Varro push through the crowd while others fight to follow in the wake. The frightened mob tramples a few and knocks a couple more from the ledge before everyone is strangely pacified. Even you feel a sense of calm settle your nerves. The wounded and elderly struggle to make it onto the floating rocks, while fear of the bridge paralyzes the legs of others. Dredge keep chase, crossing onto the bridge while hesitation. As a Varl to carry those struggling. A wrinkled Varl nearly spits and shouts, We are not your beast of bard and human, carry them yourself! Probably Hagen knocks over a supply guard, spilling its contents into the classroom. He suddenly scoops up the slowest classmen, placing them in the cart. Ivor joins him, knocking back any dredge for good clothes. The cart is moving and only dredge left behind in the caravan's way. You watch as the floating stones nearest the land trample and drop back into the chasm, making all standing there with them. The sight is terrifying, but you turn and urge the others to keep moving forward. wind is growing visibly weaker. Meanwhile, many in the caravan are stunned by witnessing family members fall to their death. The effect is spreading. Uh, how can I help you? No, don't disturb him, Jenna says, but Aileen's frustration wavers as he looks towards you. The bridge rumbles and a large section falls away, taking with it another family of fighters. And you can't see him falling, oh my god. Stones behind the cavern are falling faster than the rising ones in front. The rear clansmen are pushing forward in panic. Warwick shot. Knock some of those people over the edge before we all go down! People gasp at the plea from him. We are carrying too much, Avery says. We've got to get rid of something before the Mendu drops us all into the depths. We look around and see many people, food, and a massive guard. The ravens are holding only two of these options. Damn, more food! Well, they drove that cart! Before the Vulcan responds, absolutely not! 
Her destruction affects everyone's force to a knee. The entire bridge shakes and stones fall away around you. Crimson scream as they fall to the death. Dino scrambles back to Aiden's side and the shaking stops. Over stone statue. You should have left those people back on the other side. At least they could have died fighting. The caravan continues forward in a fog of fear and worry. A bit further, I went. A <laughs> wind scream chills as you you ask the echoes of the cliff. I'm a hundred yards away. Again, the bridge shakes, but stays together. When she looks at you, her tough friend, this is killing him. She says. And I won't let that happen, my tones are cold. We'll damn the rest of you of the supplies. Thank you. We will place them in own stuff, says Juno before turning to Aiden's side. The supplies are damp and the Batman moves forward. Watch your step. It's hard to believe we made it across that chasm. Now we find what's left of Ormstaller. Once a great trade town at the fork of the Ormsa River. How many lives must have been lost here? Looks like a few buildings might have made it. Whatever caused that chasm completely destroyed this place. From the massive world to the youngest human children, everyone is sapped from crossing the chasm. Tents are loosely strung up and gear is thrown on the ground as everyone falls asleep. You manage to post a few guards out of habit before sinking down against the crate, wrapping your cloak, door, a cloak around you and closing your eyes. Your chest age, aches from, as if from a wasp sting. Leaning around for the cause of it, you look down between your leathery, grey fingers running over a red stone breastplate. Grasping, you open your eyes to find your cloak still wrapped around you. No stone armor underneath. The caravan is still asleep, snoring more prevalent than usual. You are able to drift off a bit for a bit more rest before facing the task of the new day. And that's gonna be it for today. So, well, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!